Shane Bouchelle is honestly a fun prospect. And I, you know, I did my top 10 quarterback rankings. He made the list. He was number 10. And the reason why I made sure I put him on the list, even though honestly, there was, you know, several categories. There's the Wilson and Lawrence. Those are number one and two. I then had the four other, you know, big prospects as like first round talents. And then I had three guys that were not first or second round talents, but like sort of guys I would still be happy about drafting. And then I was kind of like, okay, who else do I put on this list? I can't do a top nine. I got to do a top 10. Who's the other guy? And I felt like Bouchelle was the one guy I could see being a Gardner Minshew, perhaps. Uh, I don't think, I don't really feel strongly about any of these guys. And to be honest with Bouchelle, like if there's a guy who I think could be a potential, like, you know, I don't know, uh, starting or even like a quality backup guard, you could argue that that would be more worth it than Bouchelle. But actually, I think Bouchelle would be more worth it. Unless you think someone could potentially start, uh, I think I would probably rather have Bouchelle in like the sixth or seventh round. So we'll start off with this play. It's going to be a cover three zone that Bouchelle is going up against. And uh, first things first, you're going to notice that I drew a stick figure on the field. That's because, you know, that's the route. It's just further up off screen. I don't have the all 22 footage, so we got to work with what we have. But it's a go route towards the sideline. So, you know, thanks to my great stick figure drawing, you can see exactly how this works. But anyway, so Bouchelle takes a snap. And what you notice is that really there's, well, first thing you notice, just it's a wide open receiver. I mean, plenty of separation. This is obviously a good situation for Bouchelle. But still, what I sometimes still like to look at these plays because, yes, obviously it's more impressive when you can throw it through a super tight window the reality is an accurate throw is an accurate throw and if you can hit a wide open receiver but still throw it in an accurate spot that's still pretty good and watch this is a very accurate throw and you know again a lot of air under it but he's able to hit his receiver in a way where he's able to get a touchdown that's pretty good you'll certainly take that like this one's going to be another example where again it's the same thing i didn't draw a stick figure this time sorry in, in case you're watching this video only for stick figures no stick figure on this one but it's it's a very similar thing this time it's a cover three zone blitz as opposed to just a regular cover three zone blitz but for a deep route that doesn't really change much except for the fact that bouchelle might have less time to throw bouchelle takes a snap and actually that's not even a it's not even a blitz i was wrong uh that's just a tr there was only three men on the line so i misread that made my graphic wrong uh anyways moving on here you see where there's the receiver downfield this is a lot tighter of coverage right so this one is something that a lot of people might pay more attention to just because there isn't as much separation there's basically no separation and also, Bouchelle, who put a lot of air under that last one, puts much less air under this one. And again, he's able to make this uh, an accurate throw. It's not the best throw you ever see, but that's where he wanted to hit it. So uh, a good throw, not a perfect one, but a good one. So he doesn't necessarily have the biggest of arms, but you know what? He can still put it, you know, hit a spot deep down the field, which you can work with. Think of Case Keenum, who doesn't necessarily have the biggest arm, but as long as you can just put it in a spot, you're going to be okay. Uh, I think my biggest issue with Bouchelle is honestly that I just feel like when he's, you know, methodically driving, he'll just, he'll make some dumb decisions, quite frankly. And it's just on these design plays, he's not necessarily, that's not really why I would want to draft him. So like right here, it's going to be zone coverage. You see there's a receiver. Uh, that's where he wants to hit. But one of my issues with Bouchelle is again, we talk about one read quarterbacks. There's just, he'll just make some kind of odd decisions watch once this play starts he's now going to be throwing enti entirely across the field where there was basically no separation and he's lucky that wasn't an interception and if you think about it he's on the hash marks on the top of the screen throwing all the way to the bottom of the screen when you're at the six yard line it just doesn't make sense and now i want to talk about this one because this one's another interesting play i think it's going to be another deep route uh it's, it's again to a receiver who's currently off screen off screen towards the bottom of the screen but what I think is really notable about this play, and the reason why I want to bring it up, is I've shown Bouchelle kind of get a lot of air under his throws. That's how he typically likes to throw the football. The reason for it is because when he does try to zip, it doesn't really work too well. He needs the air to throw accurately, which is a concern. He doesn't have the arm strength that a lot of these guys, in fact, that all of the guys I put above him on my list, came, which you can, by the way, you can check out by listening to the podcast, which I uh, posted on Sunday. So uh, really for me, I just, I think that it's a little bit concerning and watch what I mean. So Bouchelle takes the snap. He is going to, you know, try to bullet this one through and you see that there is a ton of separation. I mean, this is just a throw that you have to make quite frankly. In the NFL, you're not getting guys this open and in college, when you do get them, 
you want to be able to hit it because this is the touchdown if you make this throw perfectly. However, this one's overthrown. And I want to be clear, he's not overthrowing you know, a bunch of deep balls, but he is overthrowing it when he has to get it there in a hurry. He typically is more accurate when he can take his time, but obviously that's a concern because sometimes you have to get the ball there in a hurry. So you might be wondering, well, wait a second, Jackson, then why would you draft him if you don't love his deep ball accuracy, don't love his over the middle accuracy, don't think he makes great decisions? Well, the one thing that he does incredibly well is just sort of after the play breaks down, he does a ton. And I guess that's really the one thing is if you feel like you can just get him good enough to where he can just be okay in terms of like you know running a typical offense then when plays break down he can do some fun stuff and quite frankly when you're in a situation where your starting quarterback goes down and you need a backup having a backup who can make something out of nothing really has it, it's a key factor and he can absolutely make something out of nothing not just he's okay at it he's really good at it like take a look at this one so before this play starts, only one guy you have to really watch. It's going to be that player right there for Tulsa. That's who you want to take an eye, keep an eye on because he is going to create some pressure off the edge. Watch, right when this play starts, he creates that pressure off the edge, but Bouchelle notices it. Really good pocket presence. That's one thing I really like about Bouchelle is he has good pocket presence and moves up in the pocket to where he can get some more time. But it's a third down and 11. So running for yards here isn't going to do much because unless he can break a tackle, he's not going to be able to get the first down right here and they'll have to kick a, kick a field goal anyways. So, you know, if you see something that maybe is open, then it would be a good idea to make that throw. And just watch this throw. He stops, throws an absolute dime all the way to the other side of the field. I mean, that's, that's just absurd. That's just incredible. So that's what I mean is... On plays like that, when things break down, he absolutely can get stuff done. And that's probably one of his better throws he made all year, quite frankly. I think it's possible I overblew uh, the a little bit of arm issues to some degree. It's not like he's a bad thrower of the football or anything. It's just not great, I guess. It's just kind of fine. And you know what? A guy who has a fine arm, who can make stuff happen after the play, who is a good athlete, has good pocket presence, uh, there's value in that. So I definitely think he has good backup upside uh it, it's hard for me to really i guess gardner Minshew upside is probably like the best i can think for him which is listen for a late round pick he might go into sixth or seventh round so if you want to spend a pick that late on him i'd be totally cool with it i wouldn't spend like a third round pick on him i think that would be crazy but you know late round pick a day three pick i, I can see it i certainly could uh, that's what i think at least what do you guys think let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on shane bouchelle Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.